Welcome everybody to Tego Cyber's channel. We're sitting here once again with Shannon. Today we want to talk about some of the strengths of your guys' platform there, Tego. But first and foremost, Shannon, how are you doing? Are you ready for the holidays? I'm doing great, Michael, and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, so tell us about some of the strengths here. Let people know and explain the difference between your platform and some others. Just, just kind of give people the 411, keep it very high level. Not a lot of people are deep into it, and but we'll try to answer anyone's okay. questions along the way that may come up. I got you. I hear the message. Don't geek out too much, right? <laughs> so first, I guess probably we should talk about like why did we create the Tego Threat Intelligence Platform? And it's really comes down to some of the gaps that Troy identified within the threat intelligence market segment while working in security operations on a daily basis. And really what Troy saw was that his security analysts were having to go out when incidents occurred and having to go out on the internet and research IP addresses and find out information about domains and try to really figure out when they get a ping that something was bad, like, why is it bad? Do I need to be concerned? Do I have to spin up incident response? And that research and finding the information was taking a lot of time and effort on their part. Um, where, you know, it was something we know is bad, but we don't know why it's bad. So that's one of the reasons why we created the Tego Threat Intelligence Platform is really to give security teams um, what is known as speed to decision. So in plain terms, that basically means having the information at your fingertips to make a really quick informed decision. And we believe that we can do that with the Tego Threat Intelligence Platform through basically, I think I'm probably explained how it works. We take in all the threat data from various sources, open and free on the internet, paid sources through some of our government affiliations. We bring that into our threat intelligence platform, do some analysis, and take an additional step of adding additional context. So a lot of those threat data feeds or what is known as speeds and feeds are just single little pieces of information of like, these are bad IP addresses or these are bad domains. And that's all the information that there is we turn it into intelligence by adding the context of, we can really say kind of the who, what, when, where, how of the threat data to turn it into intelligence. So we'll, if it's an IP address, we'll say this IP address is bad because it belongs to um, you know, this threat group if we can do the association, uh, but it's known to do these type of behaviors like brute force servers or phishing scams or ransomware actors, those kind of things. Okay. And then through, yeah, and then through our integration with the SIM platforms or the system information event monitoring platforms, um, we can actually match that to the customer's environment. So kind of match the threat intelligence to the customer's environment and come up and say, here's the matches, here's the stuff in your environment that you need to be worried about. And in fact, um, do you want to see what it looks like? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, to say visual guides will definitely help us along the way through this. Okay. Program. So yeah, I could show you actually uh, what our Splunk dashboard looks like. Um, so this is the Tego Threat Intelligence Platform with our Splunk uh, integration. Um, we developed an app known as Tego Guardian. And essentially what it does is, like I said, it matches up the threats that we know about to the data in the customer's environment. And then we come up with a list of uh, the top 10 threats where we say, you know, based on the number of occurrences and the severity of the threat, here's the threats categorized within your environment that you need to take a look at. Nice little geolocation. We break it down then into you know the types of different threats and such. We're adding actually a news feed um, in the coming months that will give information about zero days vulnerabilities that may affect the customer environments that they need to be worried about. Um, so really, all the information that a customer might need about threats within their environment, they can easily find in the Tego Guardian dashboards. Um, and it's really simple um, what we do, um, but it's really, like I said, it's about speed decision, having the information at the fingertips. Um, we provide additional information as the customer, if they click on something, it drills down, gives them some more information about what's happening. And then as well, like I said, we, we tell them where they can find the information within their environment. So we come up with a list here kind of are the assets or the computers that are affected by the threat. So, you know, clicking and drilling down and getting, you know, more granular, more information. So like I said, it, it's a fairly simple platform, but really, you know, the, yeah. the benefit of Tego is in the quality of data, the quality of the threat intelligence, and how easy we're making it for security operations teams to find the threats 
and then have the information that they need to make an informed decision. Yeah, you, you, bring, you bring up a really good point there when you talk about making an informed decision as quick as possible. Time, especially in relation to anything cybersecurity, is, is money and risk. The longer it takes to figure out if something is a problem or not, the amount of data that can even be lost in that time period is, is, is humongous. So, so yeah, I guess, is, is there any other way you would wrap that around people to help understand like the real benefits of your guys' platform versus the competition? So um, there's a couple things that make us a little bit different than the competition. One is our price point. We're trying to make cyber threat intelligence affordable so that everybody can have access to it. Um, so, you know, whether it's a small school district or the largest of organizations, threat intelligence is important and it helps better our defenses. So we're trying to make threat intelligence accessible to everybody. The second thing is that we fully integrate into the SIM platforms. Some of the other threat intelligence providers will do a small integration where they'll serve up the threats and you know it'll pop up that this is bad. But when you click on it, then you have to go out to their platform, log in you know, to get the information. They charge on a per user basis. So what we've done with Tego is that we fully integrated. You never need to go out to Tego's website to find any information. We serve it all in the SIM platform, as well as it's, everything that Tago has for one price. So 75,000 per year for all threat intelligence integrated into your SIM platform. And of course, we also have what we call recursive searches. So um, another difference for us is that we don't necessarily just look forward. We look backwards as well for the customers because when we know um, that something is bad, typically it's been bad for a little while before it shows up on our radars of, you know, hey, this is something we need to be concerned about. If you think about solar winds, that infrastructure, those IP addresses, AWS servers, those were in use for about six months before we knew anything about what was going on at solar winds and the hack. So in that case, we should have, if you were concerned that you're um, affected by the solar winds hack, should have looked six months back um, to see if they had ever touched your infrastructure or your enterprise to find out whether you, you had been compromised. So taking a look backwards and not just looking forwards is a really important piece as well. Wonderful, Shannon. Well, I think you did a pretty good job of walking people through and being able to actually see it and everything really helps concrete it in people's minds. But if anyone still has any questions, don't be afraid to ask or anything. We'll happily walk through it further for you guys. But for now, Shannon, any closing remarks before we go? No, I'm good, Michael. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you and everybody watching.